name's Terry. Uh, I've been fighting professionally for almost 10 years. I, uh, I started training heavily in MMA, or full-time you could say, when I moved out here in 2006. So uh, I wrestled at Arizona State, wrestled all my life. Um, natural progression for a wrestler uh, is the fight. So I, I came out here with my wife, who I met in college. I would have followed her to Timbuktu. Luckily, it was it was uh, the Bay Area, and I met Kung Lee, and I started training with him. And I mean, he really mentored me for the first seven, eight years of my career. I've been lucky enough to train with guys at AKA uh, Combat Sports Academy, Guerrilla Jiu Jitsu. I'm looking to accomplish the goals that I have not accomplished yet. Awesome, awesome. So in addition to being a pro MMA fighter, you're also a personal trainer and a coach. I've been a personal trainer for eight years ago. So I think as a professional fighter, especially in the beginning of your career, you're not making a lot of money. I mean, I'm 10 years in and I'm not making a lot of money fighting. Being a personal trainer has, has allowed me to stay in the gym, allowed me to make money, allowed me to progress my skills as a fighter and as a coach because you have to you have to have some backup plan after you're done fighting. Why spend all this time mastering something like fighting if you can't teach other people to do the same thing that you're doing? What would you say is the secret sauce for your training regimen? Secret sauce is the coaches that I work with. I don't just work at one camp. I get to work at three different gyms with three set of high-level coaches. Gorilla Jiu Jitsu, I get to work at Combat Sports Academy, and here at Smash Gym. So I have a very wide variety of coaching styles. It's really interesting that the pros even have coaches. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I think that everybody needs a, a trainer or a coach to push themselves. You know, I was, talk I was talking earlier about mental toughness and we all have a breaking point. When somebody's watching you and coaching you, and especially when you respect that person, and you want to not only do good for yourself, but do good for them, succeed for them, I think that pushes you to that extra, extra little inch, and that makes the biggest difference. And as a professional fighter, this game, this game is a—it's all about the inches. You know, the smallest difference can be a win or a loss. And the same thing as a as a trainer, I try to teach that to my clients. I think that people make a lot of mistakes, and you need to call them out on that in a respectful way. They can grow from that. If they're not, if they're not being, if they don't have their faults or their the negative habits they have in their life pointed out, they're just going to keep making those mistakes. Gotcha. As a coach, you need to direct them the right way. And what would you say you, as a coach, uh, makes you a different breed? As a fighter, I can teach self-defense, and that's a big thing that, that I emphasize with my clients. So anybody that's well-read or well-educated can teach you about body composition and nutrition, but I can also teach you how to defend yourself. If evil exists, you must be ready. I always tell my clients that. I stole that from Dave Camarillo, thank you, sir. <laughs> I think that when we're teaching somebody technique, they start focusing on that instead of focusing on, oh, this hurts, that hurts. And then all of a sudden, an hour has gone by and you're sweating and you burn a thousand calories and you're doing more than just working out. So some of the exercises I regularly include would definitely be hitting mitts, hitting tie pads, doing anything self-defense or martial arts based. I also like to do a lot of plyometrics, so body weight exercises, because one objection that you'll have with your clients, for some clients is, oh, I'm traveling, or I couldn't make it to the gym, or I only have 30 minutes, I gotta bring my kids so and, uh, you know, so and so place. Well, if I teach you plyometrics and the importance of plyometrics, you don't need to drive to the gym. You don't need to have a, a weight room to go to when you're traveling. You just do it in the comfort of your home or the comfort of your hotel room because it's very easy to make excuses. But if I give you the foundation for plyometrics, there's no excuse on why you didn't work out. Well, I think the, one of the best exercises ever is burpee. <laughs> I'm, also, uh, I'm also CrossFit certified, uh, or I'm certified as a CrossFit coach. So they do a lot of burpees. I love that. Uh, I like toes to bar, where you grab a bar and you just bring your toes up to the bar. Sounds pretty simple, but it's incredibly hard, especially if you learn how to string them together. One of the best core exercises also is squats. People always want to do sit-ups and crunches to increase core strength. That's great, but why not work the entire body and 
work a squat, which is probably the best core exercise. So I'm a big believer in squats, deadlifts for core. Uh, secondary, supplementary exercises for your core is sit-ups and crunches. Okay. Going back to the burpee, a yeah. lot of people don't even know what a burpee is. Okay. Um, and those that do might not even know why it's so effective. Perhaps yeah. you could talk to us in, in just what muscle groups are involved and how it's helpful. Okay, so a burpee is chest to the floor and then a jump. The point of the burpee is to get on the floor, touch your chest to the floor, and get up as quickly as possible to a jump, an explosive motion. I mean, when, it talk, when you're talking about what muscle groups it works, that's like an entire body, an entire body workout. So you've got your legs involved, you got your chest, you got your abs, you got your lower back. If we're talking about why we train, we want to train for health reasons, we want to be healthy. One of the things that everybody fears, or most people fear, I would say, is not being able to be self-sufficient. So when we're older especially, why do we go to a convalescent home? Or why do we or why do we get taken care of by our kids in the home? Well, that's because we can't get up off the floor. That's one of the reasons. So why not practice getting up off the floor a thousand times in a month and get awesome at that? So that's never a problem. If you're interested in getting some training done, please hit me up on Trainer Date, or you guys can email me at jterry.fitness at gmail.com. That's as in my name, James Terry, jterry.fitness at gmail.com. Uh, thanks to GFY for the, for the great training gear. I uh, appreciate you guys for many years you've supported me. Um, I, I'm, I'm in Dublin, I'm in Pleasanton, I'm down here in San Jose, Smash. So if you guys want to come train, want to learn self-defense, or you want to do some strength training and op or optimizing your body composition, please hit me up. I'll uh, be happy to work with you guys. Hope you have a great day. Thank you much, Trainer Day. Appreciate you.